Good morning. It is Thursday, September the 21st. No, 22nd. Yes, September 22nd, day 21 of Praying for Marriages. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for watching the replay with us today. Um, it's been a great day already. It's been a great day already. Mrs. Bell will be joining us momentarily. Um, but I hope you guys have had a great week so far. We are, as I like to call it, we are we are, have made it to Friday Eve. Today is Friday Eve for those of us who are off on the weekends, and we look forward to Friday coming. Um, I have dubbed Thursday as Friday Eve. Good morning, Mother. Yep, it's Friday Eve, so um, make the best of it. If you're off on the weekends, you know, you're looking forward to Friday. Um, it's Friday Eve. Yes, it is. We have a football game tonight. Our son, number three, uh, plays football. So we got a football game tonight. And this is a bye week for son number one. So we don't have any football games tomorrow, bless God. Good morning, Jazz. While we wait for Miss Bella to come, I want to uh, remind you that this Saturday, um, this Saturday at St. Joseph Baptist Church in Mobile, 661 South Broad Street, um, Tamika will be the speaker at the annual prayer breakfast for the missions for the matron for the matron so if you're in mobile area and you're able to make it to the prayer breakfast the tickets are only five dollars and now read we do have your two tickets for you uh we have at the, they'll be at the table at the, we have at the table for you when you come so good morning tawana good morning lashandra good morning nari we are excited yes please share 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 we'll wait for those uh latecomers to come on Please share good morning, uh, Miss Austin. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for joining us this morning. And thank you all for joining us. The, you know, for, like, Many of you have joined us for a majority of the every day this month. You know, we have some slackers on Saturday, but, you know, that's all right. I understand it's sad for some people to sleep in day. <laughs> 21. Today, uh, there's 21 days of praying for marriages. So, thank you. Good morning, Miss Tanisha. Day twenty one. Today we're going to talk about. I'm. I'm not sure. Having I didn't look back. I did not look back at my notes, but I don't think we've talked about this. I know we mentioned it in a couple of videos, and you know we talked about it on our interview on the radio on Friday, but I don't think we discussed it with you with you all as a uh, the, the general topic for that day. So we're going to talk about loyalty in your marriage. Um, loyalty in your marriage. It's a great topic. Good morning. All right, let me see. Okay. Good morning, Ooh. Periscope. Good morning, Periscope. So we're gonna talk about loyalty in your marriage, and this morning, um, if and uh, this, this conversation is kind of one of those conversations where uh, you need to talk about it and what loyalty really is. So loyalty is just really um, uh, remaining true to your part, your spouse. That what that means in this is what we're saying is you when you having a a, a downer. A bad day. Um, that's not the time or the, the the opportunity. Really, in any case, you know, you want to really respect your marriage. Mm -hmm. You want to have a healthy respect for your marriage. And there are certain things concerning your marriage that you don't need to share with anybody unless you're getting counseling, mm -hmm. and you need to just you know, disclose certain things that you need that you're getting help concerning those areas. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, there are certain things in your marriage that should be off limit conversations. Tamika talked, um, I think it was yesterday, maybe one, and it was one day this week, about a previous friend of hers who was asking her about our sex life. What's things like in the bedroom? That's not a, that's not a conversation that you need to be discussing with any of your friends. Right. I'm so sorry. Right. If you're unhappy in the bedroom, that's a discussion for you and your spouse. And if there's some other problem that they may need some counseling or some medicine or whatever the case may be, you you speak the professionals out in the air, but you don't sit around discussing your sex life in your bedroom with with your friends, right? Uh, now this conversation goes back to that uh, naked and unashamed. Mm -hmm. When you when you're being loyal to your to your spouse, mm -hmm. you're protecting their nakedness. That's right. You're protecting their insecurities. You're protecting their their uh, imperfections. Mm -hmm. You're protecting them from anything that anybody would may try to use against them, mm -hmm. you or your marriage. Mm -hmm. Because you can tell, you can confide things to people, and you know people are. They they will be your friend, and they'll listen to you vent. 
they listen to you talk. And even if you're on good terms, you're just sharing. You're just sharing about, you know, your marriage and what things are happening, what you're doing, this, that, and the, and the third. And you and your friend fall out. You know, there's a there's a great opportunity that this friend can be vindictive and just be spewing venom everywhere concerning you and your marriage. And they can go tell everyone everything you confided in them. Yeah. I learned that lesson the hard way in my B.C. years. Um, B.C., before Christ. Before Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that lesson the hard way in my B.C. years where I had friends who I would confide in uh, concerning things, uh, relationships I was in, or just concerning things I had people I would just confide in. And kind of like, you know, things you probably should talk to God about, discuss with God. Hi. Uh, I discuss with my friends. And we, when we began to fall out, when things began to happen between us, that was the first thing that they, that they used against me to destroy other friendships yeah. and relationships that I had with mm-hmm. other people because it's something I confided in them. So you want to, you know, keep, protect the nakedness, protect the, the, um, the sensitivity of what your spouse is sharing with you mm-hmm. in your, within your marriage. And that means remaining loyal to them. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. giving anyone any ammunition that they could potentially use against you, your spouse, or your marriage anytime in the future. Right. And you have to protect that. And mm-hmm. I know sometimes it's easy to just friends you've had for years and years and years, and you've talked about everything. Make sure that you you're, you don't have, you you do not have an ungodly soul tie. Good morning, uh, Latasha. With any Tanya. of your uh, oh, Latasha. Tanya. Good morning, Tanya. Make sure you don't have an ungodly soul tie with any of your friends. Mm-hmm. And I know we've, we've mentioned this subject. We probably do, do a, a video on it. Well, yeah. soul ties because we've mentioned it so many times. But make sure that your friends that you have now, even if they're, especially if they're friends from past and you've been friends for years and years and years and years and years, you may not see anything wrong with your relationship. Excuse me and how close you are. But that could potentially be an ungodly soul tie there. Well, you're mm-hmm. probably too close to them and tell them too much information because you have an ungodly soul tie. And because you have this ungodly soul tie, you can't see that this relationship is not really, should be like this if I'm married. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, especially for, for spouses who feel like their spouses, they're married, but they're still alone mm-hmm. or they're still lonely, even though they're married. Some is that it's not unusual for them to become um, tied to their friends. Mm-hmm. Their, their relatives, cousins, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sisters and brothers can have ungodly soul ties mm-hmm. when you're married. Mamas and daughters. Mamas daddies and daughters. And daughters and mamas and sons. Yeah. I mean, in this net, you should you should have a healthy relationship with them. But when it gets to become an ungodly soul tie, meaning this person is, is taking a place of someone else in your life mm-hmm. and they have moved out of their ranks of mother, dad, brother, sister, friend, and now they're they're in a they're holding a space or an area in your life that's reserved for your spouse. Mm-hmm. That's an ungodly soul tie. That's an ungodly tie to this individual. Mm-hmm. And you can potentially have those relationships with, with friends and not realize it. So, but you you can fight it in your friends and things concerning your marriage, concerning your your spouse that you probably really should not. You should not. You want to remain loyal to your spouse. If you're telling your friends something that could potentially be used against you, your spouse, or your marriage, you probably need to reconsider, you know, telling them or sharing that. Mm-hmm. Because if you if you get back, if it gets back to your spouse, you know, what kind of how will they feel? Mm-hmm. Will they feel violated? Will they feel betrayed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Consider that. If you're sharing something with a, with a friend, a family member, and I, I say friend, but it could be family members. Mm-hmm. You share something with a family member that if your spouse knew that you were sharing this information, they will feel betrayed by you, then you're not being loyal to them. Mm-hmm. You're not being loyal to them. I mean, there's always the side of loyalty remaining uh, concerning adultery. Yeah. That's the side of loyalty that most people, when you say the word loyal, that's the first thing that most people think about is adultery, um, talking to other people, talking to outside sources. But that also goes with soul ties, ungodly mm-hmm. soul ties ungodly emotional connections with other people Mm -hmm. instead of you when you have a moment going to the source which is god you go to another person the same thing like we said uh yesterday that nachos that lady she's somewhere around that man is somewhere around he nachos and um but you want him it's their mission to talk to get you to open up to get you to be um vulnerable with them to get you to um plug in and as i i I made a post 
a couple of days ago about being vulnerable with people and their emotions. Um, when you are vulnerable, you are open in the spirit realm. And so you have to be careful who you, when you're vulnerable, when you're, when you're emotional and when you're, when you're going through things, you're vulnerable. You have to be careful who you confide in because there are people who will take that. They will use manipulation. They will use deception. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're entangled into something that you had no idea that you were getting into. You're one Natalie. You know, most, mm -hmm. I don't believe that most people go into things that there, there are some people who just plain old, just, ugh. but I don't believe that they, that that's how that happens in most cases. When it comes to adultery, it's usually just starting to confide and talk. Mm -hmm. They yeah. breach of loyalty starts there. So it goes back to one of the discussions that we had about being that safe place where your spouse feels comfortable to talk with you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, them be, being able to share and be vulnerable with you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you keep that, you protect it, you shield that. So that it doesn't come back to hurt them. Mm -hmm. And that even you, in the midst of mm -hmm. an argument or a dispute or whatever, do not just go spill and vomit everywhere because mm -hmm. you're angry. And you're just you know, throwing jabs and blows and knives, mm -hmm. using what they've confided, in, confided to you with against them mm -hmm. to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another side to this, too, is you have to watch, watch people. Because the, the, usually, usually if someone is just so concerned about your spouse... That they're always asking you about your spouse. I don't care if it's mama, sister, daddy, cousin. If they're always asking, you, well, well, how's Leon? How, how is Leon doing? Is Leon okay? How is Leon? And, and, and this is just me. I'm just trained to be like, oh, Leon is okay. Now, if it's me, that's a little bit different. But for, you know, if, when it comes to him and, and my level of loyalty to him, oh, Leon is okay. Oh, yeah, he's fine. Oh yeah, he's he may yeah he may be just a little bit tired, but he's okay, because what Leon has going on is not your business. That's what I'm saying to you. That's what I'm really telling you. Without being nasty, I'm telling you what Leon has going on is really not your concern, <laughs> and you have to be like that when it comes to your spouse, because sometimes people will try to use you to get to your spouse, and this is the same thing in any level of of, of leadership or or any real. Um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Any real level, I just say leadership that you have. Um, if you are armor bearer, you know that's definitely one of those things. I don't know if I'm speaking to armor bearer right now, but if you are, you know how this works. Oh, well, girl, girl how pastor really doing? Pastor doing good. How first lady really doing? First lady doing good. Because, and it's the same in every single area when you have a, a very important relationship like that. That's how it works. Oh, well, girl, how's he really doing? What do you mean, how is he really doing? I just told you he's doing okay. Because people are trying to get in sometimes to pick. Now, you do have people who may have picked up on something, um, something going on. But usually those people will ask him. Mm -hmm. Usually those people will ask him, well, how are how, how you, how you doing? You okay? And, and they may ask in front of you. But you have to be very careful of that. People that are, you know, I've had that happen even with my friends. Well, girl, how is so-and-so really doing? What do you mean? How is she really doing? She's doing. Have, have you seen her? Did you ask her? You just saw her yesterday. Why are you asking me? So I, you know those people right there will mm -hmm. kind of pick. Those are pickers. So you have to be careful. And that's cor that's correct to one. Their their intentions are not good, nor are their motives. Exactly. Their motive. They have alternative motives where they're trying to get something else. Exactly. Um. So you gotta be mindful of that. And, and you, you have good people too. Not, and, yeah. You, you we, have people uh, yeah, who really people are who, concerned. Who genuinely are concerned. And you know. Yeah. You'll know. The sermon will kick in, and you will know. Um. People who are genuinely concerned about you. I say all the mm -hmm. time. There are a lot. There are many more people who are um who care mm -hmm. and love you and really support you mm -hmm. than those who you always hear complaining, mm -hmm. nagging, or just hating on you. And and I will explain this about loyalty. Loyalty first starts with God. It starts with your relationship. This is one of my single people. Loyalty first starts with your relationship with God. If you are truly loyal to God, His principles, the morals, the, 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 that, that word of God, living living, and really, um, really determined to live a holy, pure life, Christian life, walk in a real, pure Christian walk uh, by the fruit of the Spirit, love, kind, peace, joyness, meekness, gentleness, if you really are loyal to God and this Christian walk, being loyal to other people, being loyal to good morning, Janine, being loyal to um, your your spouse, 
it won't be hard, hard because you're loyal to God first. That's right, Natasha. That's you get good. your training with God, single people first while you're single, and you go through some things. You you get you. Some people have to learn by experience. Um, so you go through some things. You may get hurt. Some things may happen, but you learn a lot of things before you're married, so that you're wise enough to be able to cover your spouse and be loyal mm -hmm. while you're married. That's right. Yeah. And it's, it's Tosh, for those on Periscope, it's uh, one of our watchers on Facebook said, um, "Oh, they will start praying if they feel something going on in their spirit, and that's mm -hmm. true. If they feel something really going on, and you know, and mm -hmm. they can get it out of you if they're really sincere in their, in their mm -hmm. desire to want to know and really." In asking that question, they are praying. They start praying. They are praying, and, and that's it. That's it. They start praying. They're praying. I mean, yeah. and even for you. And I'll tell you later on, girl. Why? Well, I, well, I kind of knew about the. Why you didn't say anything? That ain't my place. Yeah. <laughs> you so know? you want to mm -hmm. protect protect your spouses, uh, you know who who they are mm -hmm. to you in mm -hmm. your marriage, and mm -hmm. be, remain loyal to them. And exactly. Just, and just keep them, keep them covered. I mean, keep them covered. Even mm -hmm. if even if your husband or your wife falls, mm -hmm. even if they fall, <laughs> right. you have to still protect them right. and remain loyal to them. Right. And not going to tell anybody, everyone business, what, what he did, what she did. Even if they fall, you still got to protect them. That's right. That's true. You want to keep them. This is true. Because what happens is, you know, you know your, your spouse does something to you. You know, you see this on TV, how it happens. The spouse does something, they fall, they fail, they offend you, and you go tell everybody the business and what happened and what he did, and then y'all make up. And then they're looking at you crazy. Why are you still with him? So then, so now you got this to contend with. Mm -hmm. When you and your husband have reconciled, you and your wife have reconciled, and now people in your ear, why are you, why are you stay with him? He did this, he did that, and she did this, she did this, she did that. Because you have went and told everyone what has happened in your household. And now the Lord has come in, the Holy Spirit has come in, and y'all reconcile, and people can't understand that. Mm -hmm. And they want you to leave him. Because or we, leave her. Because we throw the word, we throw the word forgiveness around a lot. I mean, I think I probably hear that word every day in some way, shape, form, or fashion. If I'm listening to K Love, watching TBN, some kind of way, I mean, you're going to hear the word forgiveness every day. However, the truth is, most people have a hard time forgiving. Let's mm -hmm. just be honest. Bottom line. So that's why that word is one of those words that you hear every every day, all the time. You'll hear the word forgiveness some way. It could be a non-Christian telling you or saying the word forgiveness or forgive. That's just one of those words God's going to throw it all the time, all the time. And so, whereas we, we like to say, oh, you know, yeah, I forgive, but truly, there's some stuff still there. Mm -hmm. So you have truly forgiven your spouse and you guys are moving forward, but a lot of people like to hold on to things. Um, jealousy over girl well you know that he did this it, five six years ago <laughs> yeah. I had someone come to my husband we had already been married um, four or five years right and call my husband to tell them tell him something that had happened like four years before we were married so it had been eight years ago he was like why are you telling me this now what is yeah you know how is this relevant right how is this but that's what people will do yeah. So, yeah. So you have to just remain loyal, mm -hmm. keep each other covered, and then mm -hmm. naturally in the spirit. Pray mm -hmm. for your spouse. Pray mm -hmm. for each other. I know mm -hmm. we're praying. With, we, we're in agreement mm -hmm. with you now, but mm -hmm. you got to continue to pray for each other even when this video mm -hmm. ends, when this month ends. You have to continue to pray for each other um, mm -hmm. together and mm -hmm. even separately. Yeah, and even if you have a spouse who who may not um, who may not be loyal to you, that's hurtful. Yeah. That can be hurtful when you have a spouse who may not be loyal to you. Something may have happened. Um, he or she may have started to confide in another person. An emotional tie may have happened. I mean, so you know, ungodly soul tie, emotional connection. Um, and and a lot of people have the question of, man, how do I move forward from that? How do I trust from that? Rebuilding trust. That's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Rebuilding trust is a big deal. But if the two of you sit down. Talk about it. If you've already talked about it and you still can't get past it, you have to get you some help that's to really, so really get past it and really talk about it. Because that's a big deal, forgiving or um, having the, I don't like to say the feeling of I've forgiven. I don't like to say that. Um, mm -hmm. Marriage is supposed to be a mystery to, out to the outsiders. They don't need to know everything. And that is mm -hmm. so true. Mm -hmm. All that she's come out and see, look at that. They always so happy. Mm -hmm. Y'all could just be in our before you got the call. 
you can like me speaking in. We went to a wedding one time. This is when we first got married. We had been married. We, well, we shouldn't even pregnant then, so it was like mm-hmm. early in our marriage. Like a month. We went to a wedding. We drove separate cars. <laughs> we weren't even talking. We was there together. We were smiling. Mm-mm. We weren't fun, baby. I got the picture. Yeah, we weren't. We really, we really weren't smiling. But we uh-huh. was together. And people, but people, you know, we weren't, you know, we came in separate cars. Yeah, if you see us, <laughs> if we smiling, we smiling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you see me like this, <laughs> something I mean, happened. <laughs> I'm usually just like, <laughs> people who really really know us can tell yeah, yeah. but we, we came in separate cars and we then by, after the wedding I think we brought one car home we, we brought one car home mm-hmm. we rode together and then we went to reception together mm-hmm. so um, but just I say that to say that it's a mystery people should not know everything that's going on in your marriage every time you and your spouse having an argument or getting into it you're not getting along there's not time to forget the phone call your girlfriend yeah, he done did it again. So and so, so and so, so and so. It ain't that, you know. Just talk to God. Lord, he done did it again. This is yours. You got to do something with him, Lord, because I'm just tired of it. <laughs> Good morning, Nanny. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so that's 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 that. Make sure you remain loyal to your spouse. Mm-hmm. Keep them, protect them, cover them mm-hmm. in prayer. Cover them in the natural. Cover them in the spirit. Um, protect their vulnerabilities. Protect mm-hmm. their their insecurities protect their nakedness. Mm-hmm. And you have to you have to really have a hard talk with yourself and ask yourself if this is something that you have if this area you need you need help in. If this is something you have been doing. Mm-hmm. Single people ask yourself, are you loyal to God? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Well mm-hmm. we'll go ahead and share this video one last time before we pray. We'll go ahead and pray us. Out. I want to remind you while you're sharing um, this Saturday, Tamika will be a speaker at the prayer breakfast at St. Joseph Baptist Church in Mobile, 661 South Broad Street. The tickets are only $5 for the prayer breakfast. It begins at 9 o'clock. Good morning, Good Pastor morning. Brown. That is my brother from another brother. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so if you're in Mobile area, this Saturday, 9 o'clock, September 24th, um, St. Joseph Baptist Church, 661 South Broad Street. Come on out to the prayer breakfast. Tickets are only $5. You can pay at the door or you can go to our website and buy your tickets, uh, www.soundthebells.net. You can purchase tickets there and they'll be available for you at the door as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's this Saturday, St. Joseph Baptist Church on Broad Street. Hope you see you soon. Mm-hmm. All right. So let us pray. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for just your Holy Spirit ever being ever present in our life. We thank you right now, Lord God, for those who have gathered on this video to watch us and to be in agreement with us. And we've been in agreement with them, Lord God, for you doing a great work in their marriage. We just thank you for being our strong tower, our peace, our joy, our love, our ever present help. God, you are our all in all. You are our source. You are our keeper. You are our joy. And we thank you right now, Lord God, for just being there in our lives. And God, as we lift up before you, all, every man, every couple that's watching this video, every single individual that's watching this video, God, we lift them up before you that you will continue to bless them, continue to open doors in their life, continue to bless their marriage, Lord God. Give the husband and the wife a heart to seek you even the more and a heart to love each other even the more in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And as we pray for those who are single that are watching this, Lord God, we pray that you will continue to give them a heart to serve you, God, to give them a desire to please you, Lord God. Put in them the deposit in them and we call forth every gift in them to make them a great husband or a great wife, Lord God, to be a great ambassador for you in the earth, Lord God, that they are loyal to you, God, that they are faithful to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And as we pray today, God, we pray for those who in marriages, where there may be a lack of loyalty, Lord God. We pray for loyalty right now in marriages, that husbands will remain loyal to their wives and that the wives remain loyal to their husbands. We thank you right now, God, that they are keeping and protecting each other, Lord God. That they are covering each other. They are praying for each other, Lord God. They are keeping the secrets, God, and those things that their shortcomings and their fault, their flaws, that they are keeping them within their within their marriage, Lord God. And they are praying for those things, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you are covering them. Even right now, Lord God, that you are sending in, God, even sound counsel before them, God. 
pastors and leaders that can you, speak Lord into Jesus. their marriage, speak into their lives, that can help Thank them, Lord God. If they're seeking out counsel, God, allow them to find Thank the right Lord godly Jesus. people, Lord God, to help them through their marriage mm-hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And we pray right now, Lord God, for loyalty in the households. Yes, God. God, if there's any area of, uh, of, of, of unloyalty, Mm-hmm. Or lack of loyalty, Lord God, that you would just help them in those areas in the mighty name of Jesus, mm-hmm. Lord God. For the spouse that may be married and still feeling lonely or feel like they're in it by themselves, Lord God, let your Holy mm-hmm. Spirit just come up into them and raise, rise up in them and give them a peace mm-hmm. that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. Let your Holy mm-hmm. Spirit provide comfort to their lives and to their heart in yes, the mighty Lord. name of thank Jesus, Lord, Lord God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you right now, thank Lord you, God, Lord. that no weapon that is formed against marriage shall prosper thank in the mighty name of Jesus. You, we Jesus. even silence the voice of every naysayer, Lord God, even those who've been spoken against marriage. We silence their voice right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we just declare that their words have no power, no influence, no authority in their lives, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit is fully operating in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. That they walk in the plans and purpose you have set for their life in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We decree and declare, Lord God, that their marriages shall live and they shall not die, Lord God. They shall walk and live in prosperity, God. That they shall live under an open heaven Thank that there is Lord. nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken in any area of their lives yes, Lord, in the Jesus. mighty in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank Lord, you Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being a keeper. Thank for being you, our peace, our joy. Thank you, Lord. For being our strong tower, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord God, thank for you, what Lord. you're doing in marriages this day. Thank you, Lord God. That marriage is this day, God, should never be the same. Mm. That after this month, God, marriages shall never be the same, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. God, we, if, if, there are un, if there are couples or individuals who have ungodly soul ties, that you reveal those soul ties to them, God, that they would sever those soul ties, God, and reestablish healthy relationships, Lord God. Yes, healthy God. connections, healthy individuals in their lives where they can have healthy, sound, and solid relationships in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank in the you, name Lord of God. Jesus. Lord God, give them a longing and a drawing and a pulling for yes, more Lord. of you, God. Yes, Lord. Lord God, strengthen their relationship. Pull on them to strengthen their relationship with you, yes, Lord, Lord God, so that they are more loyal to you, Lord God. In the name and of in Jesus. turn can really, really, really and truly be loyal to their spouses, Lord God, and can really and truly, truly, truly be loyal in their singleness, Lord God. So give them a longing, a desire, a pull for more and more and more of you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise you, that you are certainly worthy of. Thank you, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Good Thank morning, you, Lord Freddie. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank mm-hmm. you all um, so much for joining mm-hmm. us. This morning and every morning that you've joined us. And mm-hmm. thank you for watching the replay. We, we mm-hmm. love that. Mm-hmm. And be sure to share it mm-hmm. on your Facebook page if you're on Periscope. Good morning, mm-hmm. Lady Parker. Mm-hmm. If you're on Periscope, be sure to share with your followers. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, if you're in the Mobile area this Saturday, September 24th, Tamika will be speaking at St. Joseph Baptist Church for their annual prayer breakfast. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the area, you're able to come. Tickets are only $5. You can buy them at the door, or you can get mm-hmm. them on our website, um, www.soundthebells.net. That's it. All right. We love you. God bless you. Remember each and every day to empower and impact lives, and let's change this world one person at a time. God bless you. We love you.